this this picture of Pennsylvania Hall, um, it's kind of hard to see, uh, but I wanted to share share it because it shows it in flames. So by about 1830, um, Philadelphia had a population of about um, eight, eight, 80,000 people, of which about 20,000 were Black. Some of the richest people in the city were Black. And it, Philadelphia was a prominent center of Black political, religious, artistic, and economic thought that was very well established at, by this time, centered at Sixth and Lombard. This Black metropolis had worldwide influence and was the center for political and economic activities for the abolition of slavery. This work included conventions that helped bring together the energy needed to end slavery. For years, this rich Philadelphia Black community and abolitionists worldwide worked to fund and build a beautiful convention hall that would be the place where people fighting for freedom could meet safely. The thought was that a big, well-built, beautifully constructed hall directly on Independence Mall, diagonally facing Independence Hall would be a cultural, political, scientific, and community pearl. With pride, a 3,000 seat hall opened on May 14th, 1838. 3,000 seats, very large building. To give you an idea of the scale, if you've ever been down to Independence Mall and you've seen the Second Bank of the United States, that's about the same size as Pennsylvania Hall. Um, the hall opened on May 14th, 1838, and the first convention that was held there was the Anti-Slavery Convention of American Women. From the beginning, white opposition was already forming. Angry newspaper editorials by white men described white supremacist and anti-feminist thought. Women, they argued, should not be speaking in public places. Black and white women, they argued, should not be leading a convention and meeting in a space as equals. This is an example of overt mob mentality. However, we can consider the publishers of those newspapers to also be covert in their implicit approval of these arguments, knowing that they could cause an incendiary rise in violent action. Soon it became clear over the course of several days that despite the stature and location of Pennsylvania Hall, white supremacist mobs would be a mortal danger even in that space. The mob had gathered outside the convention from opening day to provide a physical threat to the participants. By May 17th, the convention was forced to end early as a mob of thousands hurled rocks and bricks through windows, raining glass shards down on the participants. White women linked arm with black women in long lines as they left as these stones were being hurled at them to prevent black women by, from being attacked by this mob. The mayor asked the hall owners to close the hall for the day to allow the mobs to dissipate. He also asked for the keys. The hall owners assumed that he would offer protection to the hall. However, by the evening of May 17th, the mayor and his protection were nowhere to be seen. On the evening of May 17th, three days after it opened, the white supremacist mob burned Pennsylvania Hall to the ground. Eventually, the mayor came and was seen, but said that he was outnumbered and there was nothing he could do. Fire trucks came, but sprayed water on the houses next to the hall, letting the hall burn, which is the theme we'll see echoed 100 years later in the move bombing. You'll see that this picture is kind of hard to see, but there's a stream of water. I, I believe the artist intentionally meant to show that there was water going to the homes and not to Pennsylvania Hall. Eventually, <clears throat> in this story, what we see is covert white supremacist mob violence is in, in the failure of the city administration to provide proper security and protection. In fact, the mayor took ownership of the keys. He could have stationed protective forces around the building and inside the building, but he did not. One wonders if he was complicit in a covert way. 
newspapers. <clears throat> Sorry, and um, I think that's all I had to say about Pennsylvania Hall. Um, and it's just sad that it was destroyed. I, I think it could have become um, a pearl, uh, a hat, a feather in the hat of Pennsylvania's architectural marbles. Um, and an honor to the freedom and the work of people who worked for the freedom of Black people in this country. 